Talking more about the gasoline direct injection fuel delivery system, we have a low side and a high side. The low side, which we've dealt with for many years, we will have a fuel pump in the tank. That fuel pump in the tank is controlled by a fuel pump module. The fuel pump module will get its signal from the onboard computer as far as a how much pressure we want to deliver to the mechanical high pressure pump at the engine. When we have a fuel delivery problem, which would probably show up in our fuel trims for one, we would see the computer trying to add fuel and our fuel trims would be way above 10% positive, probably in the neighborhood of 20% positive. So, well, the engine's starving for fuel. We have a high level indicator that the engine is starving for fuel because of our fuel trims. So we want to attack the fuel delivery system, the low pressure side first. So we have help here on the scan tool. We have a low pressure sensor. And on top of that, a lot of GMs will give us a Schrader valve where we can hook a mechanical gauge up between the fuel pump in the tank and the high pressure pump. If not, we have to go to the low side of the high pressure pump and connect right there at the pump with our fuel injection gauge set adapters. But here we have the luxury fuel pressure sensor PID and it's in kilopascals. You know, keep in mind that 100 kilopascals is about 15 psi. Okay, knowing that we have 400 kilopascals, so we would want to go well. How much psi is 400 kilopascals? Well, 100 is 15 times 4, 30. So we're running about 60 psi, which would be a 58 to 60 would be a nominal fuel pressure that we would see on a GM product that was not GDI going to the port fuel injectors. All our LS engine families since 1997 have been 58 to 60 PSI. So we can see we've got our low side is 60 PSI. That's going to feed the high pressure pump and the high pressure pump is going to ramp that pressure up if needed to as high as 2,900 PSI. 2,900 PSI is roughly 20 megapascals, okay? So right now our megapascals is running four, but the high number at wide open throttle, say full boost, if we were to hit 2,900 PSI, that would be right around 20 megapascals. So right now our high side is four megapascals and our low side is 400 kilopascals. There are formulas that you can plug these numbers into the internet, the web, and spit it out in PSI so it's a lot easier to understand. I have a tip for you on stress testing the low side. You can do it with your gauge or you can do it with the pressure sensor. The pressure transducer sensor on the low side is a three wire. What that means to you, if it comes unplugged, what will the pressure read on the scan tool? Well, I'm going to tell you, zero. What will the computer do if it thinks that the pump in the tank is zero PSI. It's going to go full steam ahead. It's going to tell the fuel pump control module to give me maximum output. I don't have any pressure feeding my high pressure pump. All of a sudden, if you unplug it, then plug it back in, you should see your low side pressure above 90 PSI. If you're using a gauge connected to the Schrader valve, when you open the valve or if it's a snap-on gauge, you push the button, the pressure goes to zero. 
The computer commands a 100% duty cycle to the fuel pump in the tank. When you release the button, the needles clear up above 90. You've stress tested the low side. Then it'll move around kind of like my finger is, and it'll come back down around 60. Now you know that the low side is capable of over 90 PSI, and you've stress tested the low side. The low side is okay, we move to the high side pressure. High side pressure, it's, it's not going to be a constant. I can't tell you, so if we look at this right now, we're 4.1, 4.0, 4.1, 4.0. We're dancing between a tenth of a megapascal. That's probably a sweep of a tenth of a megapascal. That's probably in the neighborhood of... 12, 14 PSI. I want you to be aware of something. With sequential port fuel injection, before direct injection, when we watch that oxygen sensor dancing in closed loop, what was changing? If the oxygen sensor was high and we were rich and we wanted to pull it down, the computer would decrease the injector on time. Slightly close the injector. The O2 sensor would drop, slightly increase the injector on time, it would go up. Think of this as immediate adjustment, short-term field trim, or another word could be micro-injector pulse width. In GDI, closed loop maintaining is done with pressure. We will, you can't see and say, well, the pressure is going to run about 600 PSI at idle back and forth. It's not going to be a constant. It's going to be moving because our oxygen sensor is moving. The oxygen sensor is moving because we are changing fuel pressure. We maintain short-term fuel trim, long-term fuel trim with pressure, not injector duty cycle. So the computer wants it to, to sweep over or float over stoichiometric, it's going to adjust the fuel volume regulator duty cycle, and you can pull that up and watch it with your O2 sensor and see that it's a mirror image to our oxygen sensor floating over stoichiometric. This vehicle also, from the looks of it here, I haven't really checked, but we have a fuel alcohol content showing us 10%. So more than likely this vehicle is a flex fuel vehicle. Alcohol requires more fuel. If this is a flex fuel vehicle and the consumer can add E85, of course it's not going to be E85 unless the tank is empty. If you're at a half a tank now at 10% and you add E85, you're probably going to come in with somewhere around 60% alcohol. The flex fuel sensor will know the exact amount of alcohol and it, the computer will adjust the stoichiometric value. What is the air fuel mixture? Like e, pure E85 is probably eight and a half, nine to one air fuel where gasoline is 14.7. So as it sees the alcohol content change, it has a scaler in the prom that will change it, change the stoic value so that it will run right and run correctly as far as our fuel trims by changing the stoichiometric value based upon the percentage of alcohol. This may be unique to only certain GM vehicles. Some Fords use virtual flex fuel. Virtual flex fuel means they don't have an actual flex fuel sensor. What would you think that would be the smart thing to utilize to determine whether or not the engine needed more or less fuel based upon the alcohol content in the fuel? Fuel trims. When you pull away from that service station on a virtual flex fuel Ford, it's looking at fuel trims to try to come up with what is the percentage of alcohol in the fuel. It's that sophisticated. In some applications, in some Fords, and some other vehicles, I'm sure, 
they have virtual flex fuel sensor. I'm pretty sure this GM product has an actual flex fuel sensor. And you can see it's hard to get gasoline that's not at least 10% alcohol. So this was probably pulled up to a pump, just normal regular gasoline, 91 through 93 octane. And we can see that we have a 10% alcohol coming from the flex fuel sensor.